I was considering this aspect of the Lord waiting. And before I go into even Noah and the church, I was considering our own waiting. Is it unprofitable? Is, it, is there nothing going on while we wait? Well, the answer to that is no, there is much happening while we are waiting for the Lord. Um, we are being perfected. We are being made more conformed to his image. The church is being made more and more like our bridegroom. There are many more coming into the kingdom. We are looking, and as we are looking, we are being changed. We are seeing more of our Lord, and understand, our understanding and our knowledge is increasing. And there are many, many other things that are occurring while we are waiting for the Lord to return. And so in considering this, if this is what's happening in our waiting, how much more is happening when the Lord waits? Because he is the creator and we are just the created. So I, looking into the account of Noah, I'm going to read 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20. And it says, For Christ also has suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the saints in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. So in this, in this account, or in this, but we, Peter is speaking of the account of Noah, we can see that while God waited when the ark was being built, there was also other things that were going on. He waited to judge the world until those who were ready were, were ready. Those who he was going to save were prepared and were ready to be saved. His purpose was not put on hold. His purpose was in the waiting as well. He was just waiting to accomplish it in his time. You could see it as the Lord waited till Noah finished, but at the same time, the Lord knew it would take Noah as long as it took him. So that's why the flood was on a certain day and Noah made it up to that point. The Lord wasn't just waiting until Noah finished. He was waiting to accomplish it in his time. I was considering how during this time of waiting, Noah's funeral were being prepared. They were continually thinking about the flood because that's what the Lord said he would bring. And they were also thinking about his provision because they were building the ark that was going to save them for the flood that was coming. This was also a benefit for his family because they were entering into the work that the Lord had, had given them to do and they were preparing to endure the flood and what was to come after the flood was there. I was also considering how... Um, the Lord's waiting accomplishes that which he purposes to do. His purpose was still to, to judge the world and to save Noah and his family. It wasn't stopped because of his waiting, but because of the waiting, he was able to prepare Noah and to make sure that he was ready for the things that were to come as well. And I know this is just one aspect of the flood because there are many different aspects. And I considered how when the Lord speaks about things in the past, we are able to see them. I was considering how Paul or Peter had said how they write no new thing to the, to the brethren because the things were spoken of under the old covenant and of the things that Jesus had said. And so we are able to see these pictures because of the Lord giving them in the old covenant scriptures as well. And I was considering how this account of the Lord waiting was a picture of what he's doing now in the day of salvation, waiting for the fullness of the time to accomplish his will. So in considering that, what is he waiting for while Christ builds his church? So in Romans 9, 22 through 26, it says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there they shall be called the children of the living God. Amen. And I was considering in this, in this text, we are changed from being enemies and strangers to the Lord to being his children and to being beloved of him. So in his waiting, these are some things that are happening for us on our behalf, but also he is gaining children that he did not have before. Another is 2 Peter 3, 9, it says that the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, for not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this scripture leads me into my next consideration, where what is being accomplished while he is waiting? Salvation is being accomplished. He is not willing that any should perish, so his long-suffering is for our benefit, as well as his own, because he is obtaining a church. He is obtaining a, a, um, children who are going to be like him, and will be with him in glory. And 2 Peter 3.15 says, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. And Isaiah 30, verse 18, it says, And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have 
mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Yeah. So there is benefit in both, in his waiting and also in our waiting upon him for the things that he is going to do. And I also consider, and this is in Numbers, that when he is waiting, he's adding the men are adding riches to their glory, but they are, and those are also, the others are adding more torments in their judgment. And this was spoken of in Numbers where it says, the Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. And I considered how he is long suffering and he is merciful to those who are his children, but to those who are vessels of wrath, they're heaping up wrath unto themselves. They're not going to just get out of these things, as Brother Michael said this morning. They're going to enter into those things which they have done. And his waiting is a time for the children of God to be seen as they, who they are and for those who are the vessels of wrath to be seen as who they are as well. So it's considering in the Lord's waiting and what's being accomplished in his waiting that we should be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And but of that day and hour no man knoweth, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So take heed, watch and pray, for ye know not what the time is. So as we are waiting for the Lord and for him to come to get his bride, we can expect for him to continue to perfect us and prepare us for the time that we will be with him in glory. And we shouldn't stop waiting because the Lord never stops waiting and just acts and judges. He waits until the time is completed because all of the things that are going to be accomplished on his behalf and that will be finished up to that point will be perfect and will be ready to be finished at that point. So those are some thoughts that I had from Amen. Brother Bob's comment in passing. So I'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer, and then Sister June will come with prayers. Okay. 